Thanks, Honor, and good morning, everyone. Um, let's talk about money. So this is Ismar David. He was a prolific type designer, calligrapher, graphic designer. He was an illustrator. He also engaged in architectural design, and he taught calligraphy. This is him in his studio somewhere in the 50s uh, in New York. From 1930 to 1990, he created unique designs, studying in Berlin in 28, immigrating to Jerusalem in 32, and to New York City in 52. His most important, important work is considered to be the David Hebrew typeface family. It is the first Hebrew comprehensive uh, family of nine members that include true Hebrew equivalents of the italic and the sans serif styles. I started researching this family for my MA dissertation in Reading, and as I retraced David's design process, there were two things that I found particularly interesting. The first one was how David based his letter forms on historic Hebrew handwriting, and the second one was the way he adopted useful concepts from the Latin type and script, um, and how he was able to do so while staying true to the Hebrew and, and avoiding Latinization. I continued researching David's work at RIT, Cary Graphic Collection, where his archive is kept. And there, I learned that David did not only excel in his groundbreaking approach to Hebrew type design, but he went a step further. He expanded the character set. I was amazed to discover that he created original new designs for characters that simply did not exist. Characters that didn't emerge organically from the Hebrew script, but could have been very useful for Hebrew readers. And it all started when I kept noticing mysterious characters that I wasn't able to recognize. These characters were never published, I've never seen them before, and the most frustrating, frustrating part for me that I'm native to Hebrew, and still I wasn't able to decipher them. I had one clue, and it was that in all cases, the characters were drawn next to numerals, punctuation, and Latin currency signs. Now, you may think, think that make this makes it quite obvious. It must mean that this is a Hebrew currency sign. But that wasn't my first thought, because I knew that at the time that David was uh, drawing this, there was no such thing as a Hebrew currency sign. So after Israel was declared a state in 1948, it suffered political turmoil that gravely impacted the economic reality. And it took several decades for the currency to stabilize. During this period, it had various values, names, and visual representations. And the rapidly changing situation prevented the development of a definitive currency sign. And to set the scene, a very quick um, overview of Israeli currency. So after World War I, the British mandate governed the area, and the currency was the Egyptian pound. In 27, it was replaced by the Palestine pound. In 48, Israel was established and there was a need for a state currency. And this was such an uh, urgent matter that the banknotes were produced before the name of the state and the name of the currency were determined. So this was done even before there was a proper bank. Um, they, the British name Palestine Pound remained, with an addition in Hebrew, Israeli Lira. Three years later, all the assets and liabilities of the Anglo-Palestine Bank that produced the first notes were transferred to the Israeli National Bank, and new, new banknotes were needed. And in 55, the Bank of Israel was finally established, and yet again, uh, new banknotes were needed. And we can see here that for the first time, the design is different, because currency is not only a mean of payment, it's also a symbol of sovereignty, and the pioneers that were building the country um, desired to apply an Israeli identity to the currency. Unfortunately, this design did not meet the local expectations, and the government appointed a public committee to decide on a new design. So four years later, a new series was issued following the committee's resolution to include motives reflecting the atmosphere of the young state. In 72, new series were issued due to a need for a higher denomination note, and in 76, 
um, the um, bank used a new um, sorting automatic system, and there was uh, a need for banknotes in different sizes. So yet again, another series was produced. So we have here about 50 years of alternating designs, one currency name, and no official currency sign. The writing convention in financial documents was to use an acronym, the initials LAMED and YUD, with this sign in between them. This is called in Hebrew Grashaim, and it marks um, the, um, the, the combination of the two letters into an acronym. And for example, this is a receipt that Ismar David received in 52. During the two decades that uh, David made his livelihood as a designer in Jerusalem, he paid for his work. He was paid for his work in Israeli lira. And this example of an invoice lacking a currency sign is probably one of many trade-related documents that he encountered. And from what I'm about to show you, um, I think he was quite frustrated with the lack of such a sign. So at that time, he was also designing the, his Hebrew typeface. And this is a pencil drawing made by David. It's untitled and undated, but all signs seem to be members of the David Hebrew regular, um, given their stroke angle, width, and proportion. And we can see a mysterious sign next to the Latin dollar sign and pound sign. This sign is a combination of the Hebrew initials Lamed and Yud, connected with a diagonal line and united into one narrower character. The thin line connects the two letters into, um, with an extension of the stroke of the Yud upwards into the Lamed. With metal printing in mind, this function is a ligature that significantly can speed up the typesetting process by setting one metal letter instead of three. And this would be the time to point out that ligatures rarely exist in Hebrew type tradition. And this is one of the concepts that David was able to adapt so skillfully into Hebrew. It's also interesting to see how David creates harmony between the Latin signs and the Hebrew sign. They all share the same width, and the thinness of the diagonal line um, relates to the vertical line in the dollar sign. The next sign is related to the italic style. And here we have a completely different approach. The stroke of the lamed is extended into a dynamic curve that increases its flow and creates larger counter. Both of the letters are rounder in the sign than they are in the typeface. And although this curve of the lamed is quite dominant, the sign is still narrower than the three characters put together. David Archives holds a lot of his Hebrew um, lettering, and most of, of which are complete sets of alphabets. So far, we don't know as to when or for what purpose he drew them, since most of them are untitled and undated. But we do know that he used to draw relatively complete character sets that included punctuation, numerals, and currency signs, even when it wasn't necessary for an immediate project. And one of these sets presents a new sign of a different nature. Here we have the Lamed and Yud initials connected with a looped line, and this loop possibly originated in the Hebrew cursive style. So here are the two different um, Hebrew writing styles, the formal and the Lamed, and the cursive. We can see uh, the Lamed in both um, styles. And if we stick with the cursive style, and write very uh, fast with one uh, stroke on, uh, without uh, lifting the writing tool from the writing um, surface, we can see that this loop is created. And this is a sophisticated treatment um, that keeps design strongly connected to its fellow members of the formal style while introducing a feature from the cursive style that is highly recognized among Hebrew writers and readers. This is another set of David's archive, um, from David's archive, with yet another sign. And uh, again, this is position next to the dollar sign, the numeral, and the punctuation. 
Now, this particular set shows a unique calligraphic interpretation of the Hebrew letter. The letters are constructed out of separate strokes with a strong focus on the area in which they join. So we can see the letters Lamed and Yud, and um, the sign composed out of three different strokes. And this forms an original sign that is very consistent with the appearance of its fellow members, but carries less obvious associ association with the Hebrew initials. Perhaps, in a different typographic reality, all of these original designs could have been produced, adopted uh, by Hebrew speakers, and maybe even continue to evolve with reactions to their use. But in this reality, they were all rendered obsolete, when in 1980, the government replaced the foreign name Israeli Lira by the biblical name Shekel. At that time, an inflation was on the rise, and the government regarded the currency change as an emergency regulation to fight it. So 100 Israeli Lira were now worth one Shekel. It was decided to keep this emergency move a secret from the public. The operation, as it was called, was to be conducted as quickly as possible. To visually aid this operation, the government used this official currency sign. And it was printed on every check to mark its new denomination. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to access the Bank of Israel's archive, so I have no information about how or who designed this sign. I can tell you that its shape vaguely resembles the letter Shin, the first letter of the word Shekel, and I can assume that the focus was to generate a bold visual distinction between the former Israeli lira and the Shekel. I was very curious to see if this sign was adopted by the, by the public and um, was struggling to find more examples of its use besides it being printed on checks. What I did find was this lovely cover of a brochure made by the print house that produced the new checks and was definitely celebrating the sign very creatively. So you can see it's raining shekels and there's an umbrella for a shekel and even a watermelon shekel on the ground. But um, in practice, despite the existence of this sign, the currency was more commonly denoted with the initial sheen of the word shekel, just like its predecessor. For example, this is a postage postage stamp that was designed to mark the currency new name. And we can see that for the price of the stamp, the sheen is used, is used um, the sheen of the typeface is used and not the sign. Let's go back to David Hebrew. In the early 1980s, David adapted the regular style to be produced for the IBM Selectric typewriter. In the process of adjusting the characters for production, he added a new currency sign that was also represented by the initial letter she. And here we have a strong visual connection to the dollar sign, where the letter is transformed into a sign by adding a vertical stroke through it. For this version, David took a new approach and experimented with combining different writing styles and not only merging um, one feature from one style to the other. So here is the sheen in the formal style, next to the sheen in the cursive style. And we can see that the sign follows um, the cursive style. And even though it has the same stroke width and angle, it stands out when it's set next to the rest of the character. In this text document produced by IBM, we can get a sense of how David inspected the sign in small sizes and we can see how it's not very con consistent with the rest of the typeface members. And we can also see that David checked the sign um, on both sides, once to the right of the number and once to the left of the number, which is uh, still a confusing issue in Hebrew since we write the letters from right to left, but the numerals from left to right. By the end of 1983, David was approached by Stempel and ended his relationship with IBM, and this typeface was never produced for the typewriter. Now David prepares his typeface for photocomposition and creates a new currency sign. Here David approaches the sign as a monogram, and he is able to combine all three letters that spell the word shekel, the shin, the kuf, and the lamed, into one symbol. In 
1984, this typeface is, uh, produ is published. Um, however, it does not include this shekel sign. So maybe in a different typographic reality, um, these signs could have been produced and adopted by Hebrew speakers, and maybe even continue to evolve with, with reactions to their use. But in this reality, the currency keeps changing. In 1985, only five years after its birth, there is a new, the birth of the former currency sign, there is a new currency name. Shekel Chadash, or New Shekel, was a part of the government economic stabilization plan to find what eventually becomes hyperinflation. The New Shekel replaced the old one at a conversion rate of 1,000 to 1. This time, the Bank of Israel was well aware of the need for a currency sign. So a design competition was led by the government advertising agency. Unfortunately, no information is available about the way the competition was, com was uh, conducted. But this is the chosen sign, and it was created by designer Moshe Pereg. In a manner that echoes David's approach to reflect the writing hand in type, Pereg describes his process of creating the sign as making a ligature out of the two initials, the shin and the chet. And although, although this was declared the official sign in 1990, and even in 1993 was given a unicode, the new shekel was still often represented in the, with the Hebrew initials Shin and Chet, with the Grashaim in between them. And this is, an, for example, a bus pass from 2006. And again, we can see, sorry, we can see the typeface um, is used and not the sign. And now I want to talk about the digital authentic version of the David type um, typeface. In 2012, the original outlines were restored with great accuracy by Helen Branshaft, who worked closely with David. The new shekel design did not exist, so Branshaft created it in all three styles. In 2016, the regular style joined the Google Fonts project, and with corrections made by Meir Sadan, a David Hebrew Israeli currency sign is finally out there in the world. And this is a very recent example from the, Israeli from the National Library of Israel's website. So why is this so exciting for me and why I believe this is very important? I feel that in many ways, the story of the Israeli currency sign is the story of Hebrew type and typography. It's a story of an abrupt development and a rushed evolution. The fact that historically Hebrew was restricted to religious use and was revived as a secular language only in the 19th century um, leaves a typographic void that we deal with today. And I think that we can, uh, I'm sorry, and that leaves a typographic void that we deal with today. I think that we can fill that void, especially today, with technology on our side. Perhaps we shouldn't stop at just improving existing type, but also come up with needed, well-informed, creative typographic solution, regardless of the current typographic conventions. I believe that the starting point of that sort of a design process is research. And when looking into David's design solution, I see a unique case studies. These multiple design choices are a testimony of an ambitious and rigorous methodology, and we can learn a great deal from that. The diversity of David's approach speaks of a relentless effort to make up for the typographic shortage from which the Hebrew type suffers. And I think that we can, and we should, follow in his footsteps. Thank you. <laughs>